Good morning and welcome. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Word of God today is the opening of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we open your word today, we open our hearts to you. We ask, Lord, that you would just so fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we would hear and obey, act upon your word, believe in your word, for your word is truth. We believe that your word, as it went forth in creation and created everything, that your word never returns to you empty. It achieves the purposes for which you sent it. So we ask your blessing now as we consider your word today in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. My beloved friends, it is really important that we begin well. A foundation is so important, having a good foundation to anything. A little while ago I decided to make some sourdough pancakes and unfortunately in my preparation, I grabbed the wrong measures. I took a tablespoon where I should have taken a teaspoon. And so I ended up putting in a tablespoon of sodium bicarbonate where only a teaspoon was necessary. The result was that my pancakes came out very salty and they were far too <laughs> fluffy because the bicarb reacted um, and made them very, very bubbly. Easy mistake to make. I wasn't really being very careful about what I was doing and I just simply grabbed the wrong measure. So right from the beginning it was set up for failure. How we begin will often determine how we will finish. I try to begin every day on a positive note. I try as my thoughts begin to focus when I wake up in the morning to bring my thoughts around to God, to tune myself into Him, to simply thank Him for a new day and to ask that He take me by the hand and lead me throughout the day. If I do that, then I start off well and it tends to have an effect, a flow on effect throughout the day. If I don't, if I neglect to begin with God, then things very quickly go wrong. If you begin the day with your thoughts upon the Heavenly Father, upon God, with a prayer of thanksgiving and asking for guidance, then I believe that you are on the right track for the day. And I believe this is not only the case to be on the right track in the day, but to be on the right track in our lives. It's always good to begin with God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. The very Bible begins with the words, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God. You see, the beginning of everything is God. Without Him, we don't have anything. So in the beginning, God. We read in John's Gospel, in chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. This word Logos, also we could change it to in the beginning, Jesus. Jesus is the pre-incarnate Word of God. Jesus, Logos are interchangeable. In the book of Revelation, we read in chapter 1, when I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. He placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. 
and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and of Hades. Do not fear, Jesus said, I am the first and the last. And he's everything in between. And also in the same chapter in verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The beginning, the end, and everything in between. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. And they are like the brackets. Everything else in between is also of God. God is the beginning. He is the end. He is everything. So it means that if we say in the beginning God, we are on the right track. I totally and wholeheartedly believe that the majority, if not all, of our problems in the world, on whatever level you want to look at, be it a personal level, be it a family level, be it a society level, be it a level of the country, or even the whole world, all of our problems stem from the fact that we don't say, in the beginning, God. We don't put God first. I believe that the core of every sin is pride. And pride is rebellion against God. Pride is robbing God of the glory and the honor that belongs to him. Pride is lifting oneself up higher than God and saying, I know more than God does in this situation. Pride fails to submit to God. And I don't care what sin you want to talk about, take any sin that you like. If you open it up and you dig down deep into the core you will find at the very center this horrible pride. That is why the first commandment says, I am the Lord your God, you shall have no other gods before me. When God is not in the first place, when he's not top priority, when he's not the front and center of your life, then you are in trouble. Where we don't say in the beginning, God we replace that with human thinking and we are in trouble. Here in Australia, like many other countries, we are now talking about being a post-Christian society. Canada, the USA, many parts of Europe used to be known as Christian countries, but no longer. Obviously, not everybody that lived in these countries were Christians, but the majority of the thinking was framed by Christian ideology, by the Ten Commandments, by the Word of God. In Europe, already at the end of the Second World War, the erosion started to really wear away. Seminaries and theological institutes started undermining the Word of God with so-called critical thinking, pulling apart the Word of God, robbing it of its authority. So many professors put doubt in people's minds as to the authenticity of the Bible, as to the authority and errancy of God's Word, and many, many fell away from the foundations of our Christian faith. We see in the United States, for example, that prayer is banned in so many places. The Ten Commandments that used to be prominently placed on many buildings are no longer seen. God has been pushed out of society. Here in Australia, there's pressure all the time on pushing God out of everything, taking even away the Lord's Prayer from the beginning of parliamentary sessions. The last census showed that not many people anymore identify themselves as Christians compared to previous censuses. And so it's no surprise that we're in the mess that we are in. When you reject the light, what are you left with? You're left with darkness. When we are left in darkness, left to our own devices, nothing good comes. We are evil by nature. We are born with a fallen nature. We are born as rebels. We are born rebelling 
against Almighty God. But I don't want to dwell too long on the negative. We, if we watch the news and follow at all what's happening in society, we know what a mess we are in. I would like to focus more on the positive, on what can we do? What can we do to help the situation? What can we do to change the situation that we find ourselves in? Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has become tasteless, how can it be made salty again? Excuse me. <laughs> it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does anyone light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light shine before men in such a way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Jesus said that we are salt and we are light. And in order for our salt to be effective, to be salty, to be useful, and in order for our light to shine brightly, then we have to begin every day with God. In the beginning, God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, Jesus said, and all of these things shall be added unto you. Every day we should begin anew by offering ourselves to him as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. Paul writes that in Romans 12, offer yourselves to God as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may know what is the perfect, acceptable will of God. Every day as you hop out of bed, remember who you are. You are salt. You are light. You are God's child. You are his ambassador. You are his representative here on earth. Sure, we're not going to change the whole world. But we can be salt and light, place keepers where we are, where God has put us. And that is what God expects of us. That is our, that's our calling. That's our role in life. Up until the day that God calls us home or Jesus returns, we are to be his light. And to be salt wherever we are. And to be effective in that. We need to say in the beginning God. To be effective we need to cling to him. The Apostle Paul writes so many times. Walk in the spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Walk in the spirit. Jesus used the illustration from his day of a vine and its branches. He said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away and every branch that bears fruit he prunes so that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, Jesus said, you can do nothing. If you break the branch off the vine, what happens? The sap no longer flows through it. And if the sap is no longer flowing through it, it becomes dry and it can't bear fruit. And that's what happens to us. The sap is the Holy Spirit. We need to be attached to God's word. We need to be attached to Jesus in order for the Holy Spirit to flow through us, for our light to shine brightly. A light will not shine without any energy. A light needs some sort of energy source. We will not shine without the power of the Holy Spirit. When we understand this, that apart from him we can do nothing, then there's no room for our pride. There's no room for ego. 
The Apostle Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, had he said, I can do all things and put a full stop there, that would have been a very prideful statement and a very wrong one. But he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Or a better rendering of that verse would be, I can do all things through him who empowers me from within, respectively through Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit. When we understand this, then we humble ourselves and we say, Lord, I can't do this, but you can, and you can do this through me. And then we live a life that honors him. And we live a life that far exceeds anything else in this world. Just the other day, I was speaking with a colleague and he showed me that he's part of an organization called Different. Different. As Christians, we are different to everybody else in the world. We are different because we have God, the Holy Spirit, abiding in our hearts. We are children of the Heavenly Father. We are children of the light. We are different. And we live a life that lives far above our circumstances. And we can live a life that is full of peace and joy. And our life should be so overflowing with peace and joy that people come to us and say, what's your secret? How do you cope? The main way that we cling to him, stay attached, as I said, is by staying attached to this, to his word. To read it, to study it, to believe it, to trust it and to live it. You see, God's word is not just the beginning. It's everything. Here, in this one book, we have everything that we need. Absolutely everything. We have everything that we need in order to live a life that honors God. Peter writes in 2 Peter, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that His divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. God has granted us his precious and magnificent promises, so that we can be partakers of his divine nature. So you see how when we are in God's word, when we receive his divine and precious promises, then we are abiding in the vine. We are partakers of his divine grace. We are part of his family. In the beginning, God. Seek him first, put him first, and your light will shine brightly. And you will honor God. And you will live a life that is successful, a life that is fulfilled. And in the end, when the time comes to leave this world, we will meet him and see him face to face. May God help us to be a light that shines in an ever darkening world. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we bow our heads before you in the precious name of Jesus, your Son and our Lord. We thank you so much for your word. And we thank you, Lord, that we can begin with you. We undertake to seek first your kingdom, your righteousness, knowing that everything else will be added unto us. We love you, bless you, and thank you. We thank you that you love us so much. We thank you that you gave us your son Jesus, who died upon the cross, who shed his blood, so that our sins could be forgiven, so that we could be children in your family. Lord, thank you so much for that. We thank, praise, and bless you for your sacrifice, that you so loved the world, you so loved each one of us, that you died in our place. And you made it possible for us to be your children. We pray for those who have not yet come to that understanding. We ask that today would be the day that many would turn to you and would begin to trust in you, repent of their sins, receive forgiveness, and become children of God. We pray for our nation. We see how much trouble we are in. And that is directly a result of walking away from you. We pray for our leaders. We pray that you give them the wisdom and understanding to turn back to you. We pray for those in our parliaments who are Christians, who understand your way. And Lord, we pray that you will give them strength and help them to be a light where they are. We pray for our leaders and we ask, Lord, that you would give them that wisdom and understanding. We pray for those who are persecuted. We pray for those who are suffering. We ask, Lord, 
for your mercy. Forgive those that persecute our brothers and sisters that don't know what they're doing. The world is going crazier and crazier. And so it's more important that we shine even brighter and brighter. So let your Holy Spirit flow in and through us. We ask, Lord, for an end to the conflict in the Ukraine, for the end to the war there. We pray that you would thwart all the plans of the enemy. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering under natural disasters and man-made disasters. We pray, Lord, for the sick and the dying and all who are in need, the widow, the orphan, the lost. We pray for our families, our loved ones near and far. We pray, Lord, that you would just use us whatever way that you desire, that we would be always grateful, always, Lord, abiding in you and seeking your face, seeking your will. Help us, Lord, not to get bogged down in the things of this life. Your word tells us to be anxious for nothing, but to bring everything before you in prayer. And we do that right now. All the things that would be weighing upon our hearts and minds, we lift up before you in prayer and we release them to you. And we receive, Lord, the answer to our prayers from you. And thank you that you love us. Take us by the hand and lead us today and always. And hear us now as we combine our prayers in the great prayer, our Father, who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Remember, in the beginning, God. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.